All right, so what do I mean by indigenous conservation? Uh, this is a topic that I've spent, uh, ever since the launch of the Blue Nature Alliance last week, I've, I've spent a lot of time talking um, about indigenous conservation. And uh, maybe you have no idea what I mean uh, when I talk about that. So I thought I'd just record myself uh, and, and talk about what I think indigenous conservation means to me. Um, you know, it, it is a big topic. Um, I'm not saying that I have all of the answers for indigenous conservation, uh, but I, I, I want to share a couple of lessons that I've of that I've picked up along the way, uh, and I'm going to share them with you uh, right now. Um, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to give you three lessons, um, and I'm going to I'm going to explain each one of those lessons using a story. So the, the first lesson that I want to impart is that. Indigenous conservation is all about knowledge. And uh, I'm going to tell this story through a fishing story. Um, and I'm going to I'm gonna tell a joke first. Uh, <laughs> um, every time I tell one of these stories, the, the fish in the story get a little bit bigger with every single telling. Um, so fish. Um, fish are incredibly important for Chamorro, for Chamorro people. Uh, and, and so is fishing. And almost all Chamorro men, all Pacific men, identify as fishermen. And it's it's not a process that happens overnight. Um, it, it actually begins when, when we're very, very young. Uh, so my dad uh, was a, a, a net fisherman, a throw net fisherman. The, the Chamorro word for that is talaza. And a, a, you, a throw net is, you know, like eight to ten feet long. Um, and when you sort of, you, you wrap it around your arms and you throw it, and it opens up in this big, wide... 20 feet wide circle and it lands on top of the fish and uh, your participation uh, in in this cultural activity actually begins when you're like three or four years old um, you're not allowed to do any fishing but you know after your dad and after your cousins go out fishing they bring the fish back to the beach where maybe you're you know barbecuing or you know playing with your cousins or whatnot and uh, somebody has to clean the fish um, and when you're like four or five years old there's nothing more exciting on an island than playing with a bucket of dead fish. Um, and, you know, so as somebody is um, on the, um, sometimes it's by a sink, um, but, you know, maybe you're on the shoreline, somebody's cleaning up the fish, and you're in there, and you're looking at the fish, and you're picking up the fish, and you're touching them, and you're smelling them, and you, you see that, you know, when you touch some of the fish, they have, you know, very small scales that uh, sometimes are very hard to come off. Um, other fish have really big, thick scales, and um, you know they're sometimes easier, sometimes harder to, to take off. So that's kind of your first lesson with fish: um, is, is you're you're playing with your food, basically. Um, as you get a little bit older, maybe a little bit stronger, you get invited to participate in the fishing. Um, now that net is heavy; you know it's it's got metal um, chain link along the bottom that helps it sink really fast. So you, you don't actually get to participate in the fishing immediately. Uh, when you're about seven or eight years old, you get to carry the fish bag. And while your dad is tiptoeing along the, the reef, um, you, we, we, a lot of the fishing is right along the edge of the reef where the, the deep water waves are crashing onto the reef and there's a lot of fish that are swimming on the reef area there. He's tiptoeing along the reef, he throws his net and uh, you're seven or eight years old, you're probably not the best swimmer at this point. Um, and you're just, you're standing in the back holding the bag. Um, and they bring the fish to you, uh, the, the fish go in the bag, and you just kind of follow along and you're happy uh, because you, you're fishing, you're, you're a fisherman, you're eight years old. Um, as you get a little bit older, um, you've shown really good proficiency in holding that bag. Uh, you might get invited uh, to participate in the next step. Um, and for the, for the throw fishermen, uh, you, you get to take some of the fish out of the net and then hand them to your younger brother. He he's now the one who's holding the bag. Um, and as you're you're collecting these fish, and on Saipan there's there must be at least a hundred different species of reef fish. Um, you're, you're 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 taking out the fish. Um, you're learning their names. Uh, you you probably already know which ones you find tastier than the others. Um, so some fish you're throwing back because we don't eat those fish. Um, other fish are highly sought after, um, and some fish get thrown back because they're too small. Um, you know, so my favorite fish to eat when I was a kid was a, a kizu. It's a, the English name is a convict tang. It's a small little white fish with black stripes. 
Um, and if the kizu is like this big, it gets thrown back. Um, if it's this big, you're super happy because it's a big fish. Um, but I, I would say if it's not bigger than that, it, it, it gets thrown back. Um, and this is knowledge. You know, this, this is, these are things that my father taught me. Um, it wasn't written down. Uh, he was taught by his father going back how many generations of, of, of fishermen on Saipan and, and in the Marianas. So my, 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 my start in conservation started as a child. Um, and it was building a knowledge base of learning the names of fish, um, learning what they taste like. Um, when, when we kill a fish, we actually will bite its head and, and kill it humanely and quickly. But I learned what fish taste like. I, I learned what they feel like. I learned what they smell like. Um, and I, I have uh, a deep knowledge of, of reef fish because of my experience of, of fishing with my dad. Um, so my, my first lesson is indigenous conservation is based on knowledge that comes from our ancestors. My second lesson, indigenous conservation is about ethics. So I, this, is, this story, I'm a little bit older. Uh, again, I'm with my dad, uh, my brother Alex, and uh, we are on the island of Anatahan. Anatahan is a mostly uninhabited, I, I think it's un, fully uninhabited right now, um, and it's an active volcano. Um, it actually exploded about 20, erupted 20 years ago. Um, so King Kong, man. I mean, like this island is rugged. Uh, there's no port. There's barely a reef. Um, so it, I mean, it, it's rugged. It's, it's extreme camping. Um, and I, when I was a teenager, I was really, I was lucky enough that my dad took um, some of my brothers up basically for a weekend. Um, and we, we camped on the island. We caught our food. Um, we, we ate what we caught, and, and that was, we lived, we lived in this, this rugged, wild place. Um, one thing we were really looking forward to was eating a coconut crab. Coconut crab, um, is, it's the world's largest arthropod, so it's the world's largest crab, and they can be three feet across. I mean, they're, they're, like, they're literally, like, they can be this, they, they're claws, and they can be, like, this big. Uh, and to a tomorrow, there is nothing as delicious as a coconut crab. It is the prime thing for us to eat. It, it is delicious. Uh, and we really wanted to catch a coconut crab so we could eat it. Um, so we went coconut crab hunting at night. They come out at night. Um, we had our flashlights and we were out for a couple of hours looking in caves, uh, looking in nooks and crannies, looking for some of these coconut crabs. And they're big, like they're hard to miss when you see them we did not have very good luck. We, we, we actually, for the, the entire night, we came across one crab. And it was a big crab. It was a mama crab. Um, not only was it big, it was just covered in eggs. Um, it was about to lay a million eggs. Um, it just all covered in these, you know, just mounds of orange eggs. And we wanted to eat it. Um, and, uh, so, you know, some of us younger guys were like, your dinner. Um, but my dad said, no, this, this, this crab, this crab has eggs. If I let you guys eat this crab, your, your kids, when they come up to this rugged island, they're not going to have any coconut crabs for them to eat. So that coconut crab was, was let go. Um, we didn't eat any coconut crab on that trip. Um, as far as I know, that coconut crab is is, is still uh, living a happy life on Anatahan. Um, and that, that was ethics. You know, so what we were doing is, again, my dad, um, he was taking what he knew. Uh, he knew that uh, if we ate a crab that was laying eggs, that there would be no baby coconut crabs. Um, and if there are no baby coconut crabs, there'll be no coconut crabs for future generations. Um, and the restraint that he held, that he showed uh, was was ethics. Um, it was it was values. Um, it was sacrifice, um, and that's that's a core tenet of indigenous conservation, of uh, we act in an ethical way. Uh, my third lesson, um, and I, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold the punchline to the end because uh, I, I don't want to give it away. Uh, but my my third lesson happened the summer before I was going off to college, and I'm like 17 years old maybe. Um, and, and by this point, um, my, my parents were divorced, um, so I would I would send I, I would spend most of the year with my mom, and then I would spend the summer with my dad, um, and that's when we would go fishing. 
Um, and in this third story, surprise, surprise, we were out fishing again. Uh, and we were, we were on the, the north end of Saipan. And, and Saipan is um, it's a coral island. Uh, it's a limestone. And there, there are some sandy beaches, um, but a lot of the shoreline is just rugged. Man. It's just a sharp, rugged, um, jagged, primitive, prehistoric limestone. Coolest place to be when you're 17 years old. I mean, it's awesome. Um, and we were, we were, we weren't actually fishing. We, 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 had, we, we were fishing, but we had finished fishing, and we were just, we were just walking along the shoreline, kind of, you know, talking, son to dad. Um, I, I'm 17. I'm about to go off to college, and you know, I, I actually don't remember what we were talking about, but at, specifically um, until we came to a new hotel. And when I was a kid, Saipan only had a couple thousand people on it. Um, but when it became a U.S. territory, the population shot from like 4,000 to 80,000 in like 15 years. So just phenomenal growth, hotels, garment and factories, restaurants, all, all kinds of development. And we were walking along this like ancient, primitive, prehistoric beach. And this hotel had bulldozed it right through um, and put a concrete path right along these ancient rocks that my ancestors had walked on. Uh, and then, you know, 17 year old Angelo was angry. I was like, just outraged. He was like, how, how, how could this possibly happen? Like who, who let this hotel, these outsiders come in and, and do this to our, our island? Um, you know, it, it, my dad's response, it, it really stuck with me. Um, and you know, he's, he's passed away now. My, my, he died, um, about 15 years ago. Uh, and this is just this is like one of those responses that like sticks has just stuck with me for my entire life. Um, you know, like, he saw the anger in my eyes. It always makes me cry when I when I think of this story. And he um, sort of looked at me and he's like, "You're about to go off to college. Go do that. Learn as much as you can." And then come back here and make sure that something like that never happens again. And that's my, that's why, that's, that's indigenous conservation. Um, excuse me. Um, you know, indigenous conservation is responsibility. So, you know, My father told me I had to do this. Um, and I'm sure, you know, that was a message from the ancestors. So, just, you know, to, to bring it all to close, apologize for the tears. Um, ind indigenous conservation, it starts with knowledge. But we, we use that knowledge to, to, to build our values, to build our ethics. But, it, but it's all for naught if we don't take the responsibility to actually take the actions to protect nature, to protect the creation, to protect our islands, to protect our oceans. So that's, for me, that's, that's indigenous conservation in a nutshell. Um, I, I went off to college, uh, as you can probably guess. Um, I, I became... Uh, a professional advocate for the ocean and uh, I use the things that I learned in college I learned how to read a scientific paper um, I, I learned how to, to conduct research I learned how to communicate I learned how to write um, and I, I use those tools as well um, and I, I see there, there are so many uh, the, the I, I see so many connections between indigenous conservation and Western conservation um, but it comes from a different place. Um, Western conservation is about protecting nature. You know, and the stories that I told just now, uh, for us, you know, the, the conservation came from the place of providing for your family. Like that, that, is, the, that is the command from the, the ancestors, take care of your family. Um, these are, you know, these gifts, these resources are to, take, to feed your family. 
Um, and you know, we develop ways to make sure that the things that the ancestors passed down to us are passed down to our children. Uh, sure, it's, it's fish, it's coconut crabs, um, but it's also songs, it's dances, it's, it's our language, um, and it's all aspects of who we are and, and how we conduct ourselves on this planet. So uh, that's it. Thank you for uh, coming to my TED Talk. Ha, 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 ha.